Okay, so this is the interior portion of the home inspection. I'll be showing some stuff that, you know, that uh, you really could fix a lot yourself. Um, well, obviously there's some tiles that need to be replaced, but a lot of this stuff is really just cosmetic. A lot of home inspectors would just dive into cosmetic stuff and it's really annoying. I mean, you can write about caulking for days and yeah. So anyways, um, obviously you need a new attachment for this garage door over here as I, this looks like it's disconnected from the um, track, obviously. Um, don't know if you need a new garage door or operator if it's disconnected. Um, so anyways, um, this is obviously used to be a propane hot water heater. Now it's electric. It's nice that it's insulated. I just can't tell you what brand it is. <laughs> I'm going to guess it's probably a ream. Um, but I don't know. I don't think it really matters. Um, you do not need, because it's in a garage, you technically do not need a, uh, a drain out because you're in a garage, not in a house. Um, so this obviously was originally a propane. So it was originally 18 inches off the ground. Um, electric you don't have to and um, you don't need a pan below it because it's actually wood not concrete and you're not inside a living area so that's all good um, the laundry um, the trap it's, this is actually run outside to the exterior portion of the house which is obviously better than having it underneath you can see but it does need a new um, vent trap which is pretty easy so um, we'll go this way Tend the garage is part of the exterior inspection, but uh, I'll just be on this one. This used to be a third, uh, one car garage, obviously, it still is. So, if you did want to take this out and put a door in, you're more than welcome to. I would, honestly, but that's not my decision. So, um, any of these tiny little cracks are usually just little settling cracks, they're not full um, vertical cracks that pierce through. What I mean by full vertical cracks that pierce through a lot of, if it's more than a quarter of an inch, that's an issue. But up here, I'm, I would not be concerned if you had little stuff, honestly. Okay, we're gonna go through the inside now. So you need to sleep on this door underneath because it's an exterior door. It is 30, probably back then 20 minute rated door because now they require 30 minute rated doors. Um, okay, we'll just keep going around. I'm gonna start with the master bedroom. There is a little bit of a settling slope right here as you see on the end and it squeaks so i'm gonna go look underneath again but i'm not concerned about this it's just i mean what are you gonna do sometimes it just kind of settles a little bit but i'll look underneath the house again oh i yeah obviously the door needs to get replaced um there's penny around underneath the bottom most likely this was put in because the floor was probably put in later Or, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm going to have to guess. Because usually you'll, you see penny arounds when they don't want to take out the baseboard and put in loam in or tile. Um, showers work fine. And the cast iron tub is nice and very heavy. They're not fun to carry. Um, closet. There's two points of attic access. Over there, I'm not gonna bring my tablet up there. I just don't want it to get full of uh, spider webs. Um, this is Daniel's room, or it was, obviously. Um, so if you want to see this kind of stuff, you can really bondo it with wood bondo and try to clear it up a little bit instead of trying to take the whole thing out. So that's really cosmetic. And if you ever hear squeaks and stuff. I don't know if they ever really ever required self for glue in 1990. I think it was a little bit later than that. So most likely, obviously, it's not self for glued. Um, this is quite a bit off 
off the, uh, obviously it's not connected. Look at that. Um, obviously we need to get re reattached the sill. So um, the rule of thumb, what you want to do when you do that, so I can't do it. You want to close it like this, and then you want to look down underneath. And you make sure you don't see, obviously, any daylight. Then you go around, <laughs> and you, you, let me see, where did they put the screws? Actually, they put the, um, <laughs> uh, they got it on backwards. <laughs> That's what it is. Holy crap. They put it on backwards. Okay, so um, we got to take it off and turn it around. <laughs> you're not supposed to have screws on the inside. They go on the outside. So that's exactly what happened. Okay. So there's actually a little bit of a bevel on the bottom of a door, unless you cut it. So, <laughs> all right, back to it. Um, okay, so, um, all right, I already went in this room. Oh, okay, I, I just always tell everyone to put new batteries in their smoke detectors or replace them. Um, I don't know, um, one of those things that uh, anyone can really do themselves. Um, obviously I ran the fan, it works. Um, we have no heat because the, the, it is actually, uh, runs on propane. So, um, okay. Obviously, um, when you put these doors in, they ran a, you can see they ran a three inch screw through the jam. So you'd probably want to do the same thing on the bottom. Just cosmetic stuff, really. Oh, that's obviously someone broke through, kicked, some, kicked the door down. So, all right. I would recommend maybe replacing that plug before you put the fridge in. Looks like it's kind of starting to show the end, the end of its life. Um, let me think. Oh, I can't seem to get this exhaust fan to run. I don't, I don't know if it's just me. It says low, and then, yeah, off, I don't know. Um, so this tile was actually put in after the baseboard was put in, um, which I don't know why would anyone do that, honestly. It's really stupid in a lot of ways, as you can see right there, and you can see how the height is technically less than three and a half inches. The baseboard usually comes at three and a half for this kind, um, I believe so. so Obviously, you can see evidence that it's actually um, put in before. So it's kind of weird because you always have always put in the baseboard after tiles in. So I don't know. It's just what the builder did. So it's nothing to be concerned about. Uh, just in case, though, if you do ever tear out the tile, um, and if you did ever want to run hardwood floor, we'll just say that. Uh, I would say you probably could actually go underneath that baseboard, but technically once you tear it out, if you did tear out the tile, you probably will be damaging the baseboard too because of the grout underneath or how they grouted it. So anyways, if you do hardwood floor this thing, which I'm going to guess you guys probably are going to hardwood floor it, um, start with this wall right here and then you go that way. Actually, yeah, that I was going to say, except for that opening right there, you don't want to start right here with this main wall and just go that way. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. All right. I think I pretty much covered everything I really need to cover with the interior part. All right. Well, thank you.